ask about a particular player to begin with because he's been slated in the press again today. And this statement, sorry, uh, has come out today saying from Van der Vaart saying that Erling Haaland was very bad. If he doesn't score, he's quite useless. I find him a very average player on the ball. We also have a comment that came through, and I don't know how true this comment is. I don't know who it's aimed towards. It says, this guy on the stream called Haaland record in the last 10 games atrocious. Um, so Haaland got a lot of stick last night. A lot of stick last night. Do, do you agree with the with the criticism that he's getting, Mo? Yeah, he, he the, this one is calling me out. Like no, Haaland, I get that. But I'm talking about like the, the overarching oh, Haaland I'm going to just yeah. give you one thing. Erling Haaland is a very top striker. Very good. He's not a good footballer. The, my, 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 my problem with him, if he's not getting service and he's not doing well, his teammates are actually bypassing him. They're not looking for him. They're not even trying to get him involved in the game. They don't care. He's just there. If we get a chance, look at him. The guy had six passes yesterday, guys. 90 minutes. Six passes completed. Right? I think he got like 13 touches. If you're not looking for Haaland, he's not beneficial. A lot of City fans said, why wasn't Haaland substituted yesterday? I know that it's clutch moments and he can win you the game at the end. But I saw him not being involved in the game is hurting City. They could have done better. I know that the game ended 3-3, but they were literally playing man down when they had the ball. He wasn't involved. Yes, Rodiger was marking him. Listen, I'm not someone who sit here and say that Haaland's a bad player. He's a fantastic, phenomenal striker. I would love to have him on my team. However, Haaland is not beyond criticism. He isn't great when he doesn't get service. He isn't great at all. He's very average. He needs to learn. He's still young. And I believe that Man City could have subbed him yesterday, right? And got Julian Alvarez. He would have done better. would have gotten more involved. I believe that a lot of people are afraid to criticize football players these days, especially with someone like Haaland who scored 50 goals last season. But Erling Haaland doesn't get the same treatment like Saka, like Foden, like Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah, when he doesn't play well and he scores a goal, it's like, oh, he masked his stinky performances with a GA. Haaland doesn't get the same because he's a striker. But in the same breath, they tell you about, and Mo Salah is only scores goals. Which one is it? You can have it both. You, which one is it? Is Erling Haaland only there to score goals or he's there to also get involved? You can't have it both. In my opinion, Erling Haaland, if he isn't, Involved, he's useless in the picture. So I don't think Van der Vaart is absolutely spot on. Spot on. I, I have to, I have to disagree, Mo, on several things because it, you say that he doesn't get that treatment. I've literally seen so many, whether it's Sky Sports, Talk Sport, or it's calling him a League Two player. If he's not scoring, he's League it's Two much. level. It's too much. It's, it's getting, yeah, it's got, it's being way blown out of proportion now. And I actually think that part of the reason why he is not influencing the game as much when he's not scoring is down to the the role he's been asked to play by Pep Guardiola the way that Man City play and you you, you watch and and they are they do bypass him at times because you can see he's asked to stay higher up the pitch rather than drop deep and get involved in the play and you contrast how he plays for City versus how he played for Dortmund and how much he did get involved and link up for Dortmund and how much how much more he was passing and and just impacting the game and it's just different styles of play so I think it's he's being treated harshly for the role that he's being asked to play by the manager and I think if he was in a team where you know he did have to get involved more we'd see that but at the end of the day to say he's oh he's a league two player like if he's a if he's a good striker he's a good player because strikers are players you know, but like I said, I don't think it's his fault. And he is getting the criticism is mad. Like so many YouTube videos, so many pundits, Roy Keane, Ali McQuist on talks, but ah, it's league two level. He's, he's rubbish. He's bang average. I don't know. So it's and, and we was talking about this on the show. Was it last week, Terry? Did we? Was mm. it last week or two weeks ago? We were talking about that. Crit so the criticism has been there. Yeah. I I'm going to say this, right? I hear your point about the treatment that Salah and Saka and these guys get. So I'm going to keep it the same. And I don't really care about how aesthetically pleasing they are to people. I'm looking at their efficiencies as football players. And Haaland is, is so efficient. All we're seeing is him on, like, he is on the foot. It's not even a bad slump. This is the crazy thing. I was looking at his last 10 games. 
Uh, didn't score last night, scored against Palace. He did, went three games, Arsenal, Newcastle, Liverpool without scoring. But then he scored against Copenhagen, scored against Man United, scored five against Luton in the FA Cup, didn't score versus Bournemouth, and scored against the winner against, against Brentford. So he's gone one, two, three, four, five games out of his last 10 without scoring. And he scored in the other five games. But in those other five games, he scored nine goals. So a man in a in probably the worst, uh, a man probably in, in the worst form of his professional career has just scored nine goals in 10 games and he's be, being criticized because he hasn't had the greatest overall performances. You go to the previous 10 to 20 games before that and he was banging in ev even more goals. And I agree that he's never going to be Harry Kane on the ball. He's never going to be a Luis Suarez. But I don't agree that he's an average football player because when you're as an elite a striker as him, that's that's his role. That's what he does. That's his, you know, Del Piero, Inzaghi, Michael Owen. These guys weren't yeah. amazing football players in terms of this, this outstanding technical ability. They were all off the shoulder, traditional number nines. And could Haaland's hold-up play be a little bit better at times? I think so. But I do believe the criticism against him is every bit as over the top as it is against Saka and it, as it is against Mo Salah. Um, and I'm going to defend Erling Haaland. And I know it's had a comment come through a minute ago saying, um, yes, I know he got five goals in one game, but that in itself shows you he's not an average player. How many people are scoring five goals in one game against Premier, yeah, League, opposition, against Premier League opposition in FA Cup games? Same guy says uh, so that Terry, football is entertainment. It is to a certain degree, and I understand that. But we're going too far with it. I've said it for a few weeks now. Yeah. This is not ballet. This is not Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing with the Stars, as they call it in the States. You're not judging people on their, on their, when I say form, I don't mean their form of performance. I'm talking about how they look, their lines. Oh my God, look how, um, like David Beckham was a prime example. He was a good footballer. But when he hit a ball, he's kind of stars before and afterwards. It was almost like poetic in the way he moved, right? Same as Michael Jordan's very famous, obviously the very the famous symbol of Michael Jordan. I bet there are some people that look better doing slam dunks than there are others. I don't watch basketball, but some people just, you look at it and go, that just looks slick. That looks so tidy. And that's not how football is judged, per, not even per se, overly. His job is to put balls into the back of the net. That is what he is. And he is the best in the world in my opinion, right now at, at doing that, or one of the top two or three, you can't be an average footballer when you're one of the best in the world at the hardest skill in football, and that is putting the ball into the back of the net. So I think the claims of average footballer, League One player, League Two player, I think all of that is such a stretch and a reach. If your only job in the game is to put the ball in the back of the net and you're not the best in it in the league, what are you good for? If you're playing the best team in the league, and your only mm -hmm. job, you don't contribute a lot. You don't contribute a lot other, other than just tap, get in the right place to score a goal. And you aren't the best in there. That's why last season, when I said he was by a big margin better than everyone else in terms of goal scoring, I said Ballon d'Or. Because you got your team over the line. You did your job perfectly that your team won a trouble. But if Oli Watkins, Cole Palmer, Mohamed Salah, and a lot of other people are doing... They're doing the only thing you're good at, the only thing you're good at, better than you, and you don't get involved in the other aspects of the game, but they do. What are you good for? If you can be replaced by one of these guys who, but, but, the, who, who but, do the but, same but, job but as can, you... But, but can he be more. replaced by these guys last... I mean, this Not year... Not last season. Don't give me last season. But, but, okay, no, no. But uh, Hang on. But I am going to give you last season, Mo, because we do not... Again, we have to get out of this habit of judging everybody just in the here and now, because form happens in football. So you can't suddenly scrap all of Erling Haaland's CV, all of his previous achievements, all of his previous outputs, just because, by the way, right now, in, out of all players in the top five leagues, he is still the third highest goal scorer. Sorry, got goals and assists combined. He has 30 goals and six assists, right? Mbappe's ahead of him on 48. Harry Kane's ahead of him on 51, right? Now, we always hear words like Bundesliga tax and Liga R is classed as the fourth or fifth biggest league. So out of the top three leagues, uh, no one in Europe has scored or assisted more I than Erling Haaland this year. So, and, and, that's, and, and this is the thing. This is Erling Haaland having a bad season 
by the ridiculous standards that he set. But an Erling Haaland poor season in terms of the way he's being criticised still has him at the top of the pile of goals and assists out of the top three leagues in Europe. And it has him in the top three from the top five leagues in Europe. So for me, I think the level of criticism towards him is just over-egged. It's too much. It's people that didn't like him when he signed for City, said he was going to flop, were made to look stupid. They're just they're coming out from under their rocks now to have a little pop at him. Personally, I, I think it's wrong. And someone here says, and stats, I think that's, that's, yeah, stats matter, my friend, because you're a Barca fan. And if you literally halved Messi's stats, you wouldn't have had the success that you had in that time, my friend. So some statistics, like scoring goals and winning games, are the most important thing usually important. Let's not be yeah, stupid. Yeah, now. if you're a striker, goals <laughs> matter. You know what I mean? That's a stat. It's the that only matters. thing that matters. It's the only thing that matters. Yeah. Right? And I think if we look at if we look back to Salah, right? When he first came in the league and he had a brilliant first season of Liverpool, yeah, he was amazing. He got all the plaudits and it was the next season. And when, when he didn't start to live up to the amazing stuff he'd done, but still was incredible, he was getting over-criticised. It's the same pattern. So I think if we look at it and say, oh, why doesn't Haaland get as much Haaland get as much criticism as Salah? Salah's been here a very long time. And familiarity breeds contempt. And Haaland is going to find the same thing. And people are going to, it's going to, it's only going to ramp up for him now because of how much plaudits he got on the first season and everything that you said of people that were proved wrong and that went over the top. And it was the same with Salah. So it's just how it goes. <laughs> Sorry to laugh, laugh at you. Jordan here says, No, Terry, you're lying. Messi would have created the goals or dribble parties, teammates for, for pre assists. Yeah, more stats. So um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Of all the yeah, stats, it, it, exactly. Like there, there is a, when Haaland's a goal scorer, the goals again. If you just look at pure goals scored, he's still third behind Mbappe and Harry Kane this year. But Lautaro Martinez is fourth on twenty six. Then you've got Gurassi on twenty six. Uh, number seven, Ollie Watkins actually twenty four goals a season. Mo Salah's number eight. So like Ollie Watkins is what we're all calling an absolute sensational season. And he's still and he's still behind Erling Haaland that was saying he's having a poor one. And listen, is he as good on the ball? No, I mean, I just think he's having a bad time at the minute. When you always have to use stats to defend him. But this is the this is well, I'm not using stats to defend Erling Haaland. It's a good challenge. I'm not sitting here and saying that oh, he's an amazing technical footballer. I think his hold up play is good. I'd rate it as good at the elite end of the spectrum. I think he is a very, very good football player overall and a world-class finisher. But Erling Haaland's job is to score goals. And he delivers. Now, he needs the majority of his chances created for him. That is what he has always been, and nobody has denied that. Why suddenly, when he's 23 years of age, after four or five years at the top, are we suddenly hyper-focused on other areas of his game? We know that wasn't his game. He is an out-and-out -out goal scorer. That is what he does, and that is what he should be ultimately judged on. Because he isn't scoring as much goals in the league. He scores 19 goals in the, Terry, the thing about it, he scored 19 goals in the league for a, the best team, as you say, that tried to create a lot of chances for him. The guy is, I think he's the only guy from the top strikers that actually doesn't exceed his XG. He actually scores less than we actually should score. He's a brilliant goal scorer, and he was last season. But he is warranted a little bit of criticism this season because he's underperforming. So how is should... he's under a little bit of criticism because he's underperforming. I, I, I agree. No, I agree. Under, even I, I by agree. other guys, guys Mo, even, I agree. I agree with the criticism. Standards. I agree with the criticism. But the, the the words people are using, the way they're describing him, you cannot the be two, two years over the top. You, you three mean. or four years, three or four years running, you can't be one of the top goal scorers and top assisters who's won his team so many points across Europe, be one of the be one of the spearhead main integral parts of a treble winning team and being called League Two footballer, being called a bang average footballer, having your footballing, having football removed from your ability to score goals is crazy to me. It's like, if you're in boxing, professional boxing, not amateur boxing, if someone's an average boxer, but they've got such amazing knockout power, you, do, you, you don't separate it. Now, yeah. when you're putting him into a fight with somebody, Who's going to win? You might say, well, if someone boxes behind the jab and stays away from that big right, I think he'll outbox him. That's fair enough because he's a better boxer. But it doesn't stop him from being an elite level boxer still because there's more than one way to skin a cat. 
And I think that's the problem with, with some football fans. They want every, if you had it their way, they would, the, the people that say football's entertainment would ruin football if they had it their way because they want everybody to look and play in exactly the same way. And it would all become very much, it'd be like watching a bunch of robots out there. You want that variety. You need uh, uh, an Mbappe to, uh, versus a Haaland, you know, versus, versus a, an Ollie Watkins versus a Foden in terms of these debates. Because it gives us a great variety for our footballing palette, as opposed to every player looking the same, sounding the same, running the same, shooting the same, dribbling the same. How boring would football be if it was that? It'd be crazy. It really would be crazy. So you like Erling Haaland because he provides something different? Not, not per se, but it's the, it's what's always been in football. It's the tapestry of football is that there's always been different types of strikers, different types of midfielders, and you bring them yeah. all together and make teams. And then teams look a little bit. We're at the same time. We're going through an era where the same people calling out Haaland, this is the mad bit, are calling out, why is everybody trying to play out the back? Why is everybody inverting fullbacks? Why is everyone playing the same way? It's so boring. Mm. Well, imagine all the players played the same way as well, and all the systems were the same. You'd ruin football. Genuinely, you'd ruin football. You need that variety. Yeah. And Calling someone that scores at the rate and the level that Haaland does, an average football player, for me is, at best, it's disingenuous. At worst, you're being a prick.